Hi, it's Katrina. My friend David is going to be helping me out with the voiceover today, so I hope you enjoy. Number 10. Saber-toothed beast. Scientists have recently identified what they say could be the largest and meanest big cat in the history of forever. A gigantic saber-toothed cat was living in North America that weighed nearly 900 pounds, 408 kilograms, but who easily hunted prey double its own weight. This creature was alive between 9 and 5 million years ago, but we don't know everything about it yet. Researchers only recently completed a long and painful comparison of seven fossil specimens. They compared the specimens to previously identified fossils from other big cats around the world. When they finally finished their investigation, scientists from Ohio State University's Marion campus concluded they had a new species on their hands. But there isn't a full skeleton, only bits and pieces. All they had to work with were some teeth, a portion of an elbow, and other small fragments. Assistant Professor Jonathan Khalid, who was involved in the study, said the big cat was likely taking down animals the size of bison. Although they averaged about 900 pounds, 408 kilograms, they may have grown grown a bit bigger and could have potentially hunted animals up to 6,000 pounds, 2,722 kilograms. If all of this turns out to be true, this big cat was one of the most formidable that ever roamed North America or anywhere else on Earth. The investigation started with the seemingly insignificant discovery of an upper arm bone in the University of Oregon Museum of Natural and Cultural History. The single arm bone led to more fragments, and now we have this entirely new species. It was like an ancient relative of Smilodon, the most famous saber-toothed cat of them all. Smilodon went extinct 10,000 years ago, its remains discovered in the La Brea Tar Pits in California. The new cat is named Macerodus Lahaye Supup. It got its name from the old Cayuse language, meaning ancient wild cat. Number 9. Mystery Dinosaur Egg 140 years ago in 1883, a large mineral specimen was sent to the Natural History Museum in London and registered in their mineralogy collection. It was an agate specimen, completely spherical with a pink and white interior and an impressive 5.9 inches 15 centimeters long. The specimen spent over a century in the collection, slowly being layered in dust. Scientists didn't believe it held much significance other than being a large piece of agate. But in 2018, something strange happened. Robin Hansen, a mineral collector, visited the museum and looked at their specimens. He thought it was strange that the piece of agate looked a lot like a prehistoric fossil. As Robin inspected what was supposed to be nothing but a chunk of mineral, a light bulb went off in his head. He realized he was staring at a dinosaur egg. Robin got into contact with the museum's dinosaur experts to have a discussion. Paul Barrett and Dr. Susanna Maidment soon confirmed that yes, the specimen was the right size and shape to be an egg. In fact, the thin layer around the mineral kind of looked exactly like a shell. As it turned out, the original registration was right, but so was Robin. It is a dinosaur egg, but it's also infilled with agate. Now the researchers had a juicy mystery to solve. They traced the origins of the dinosaur egg back to between 1817 and 1843. The timeline is significant because the word dinosaur didn't even exist until 1842. That means this specimen may have been the first dinosaur egg ever found, just a few years before the term dinosaur was coined. We can go even further, saying the egg was collected about 80 years before dinosaur eggs were a scientifically accepted thing. Even when the world learned about dinosaurs, nobody had any idea they were laying eggs. For the first few decades, dinosaurs were basically mythical monsters. It's important to note that dinosaur eggs were likely found thousands of years ago, randomly dug out of fossil deposits. But no one knew what they were until recently. As for what kind of dinosaur laid the egg, that's not clear. It's about 60 million years old and may have been laid by a titanosaur, one of the largest creatures that ever walked the Earth but we can't say for sure. Have you ever found a fossil? Tell me about it in the comments. And be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Number 8. The Nanotyrannus 
A new study has revealed the truth behind one of the most frightening carnivorous dinosaurs ever. Scott Persons from the University of Alberta published his study of Nanotyrannus in the journal Scientific Reports. Scott says that if Tyrannosaurus rex was the lion of the Cretaceous period, Nanotyrannus was the cheetah. That's because this carnivorous monster was extremely well adapted to life in the fast lane. 65 million years ago, Scott says Nanotyrannus was very similar to T. rex only it was lighter, had longer legs, and was a significantly faster sprinter. There's only one problem with Scott's hypothesis. The scientific community says Nanotyrannus didn't exist. It's one of the biggest dinosaur controversies at the moment. There is a raging debate over whether Nanotyrannus was a separate species or if all its fossils are just examples of juvenile Tyrannosaurus. Scott believes it was a separate species that lived alongside the more formidable T-Rex, just like how cheetahs live alongside lions in the wilderness of Africa. Not literally side by side, but in the same biosphere. Others think the reason Nanotyrannus is so slim and streamlined is that all of its skeletons are just the remains of small tyrannosaurs going through puberty. But Scott didn't come to his conclusion on a whim. He and other scientists at the university analyzed lower leg lengths from heaps of different carnivorous theropod dinosaurs. 53 different dinos to be exact, including famous beasts like Allosaurus and Velociraptor. Then they developed a math equation to estimate the speed of each dinosaur. Based on their findings, it's now estimated Nanotyrannus was the fastest sprinter of them all, reaching a maximum speed of 50 miles per hour, 80 kilometers per hour. That would make it faster than the T-Rex by about 20 miles per hour, 32 kilometers per hour. Scott says that as far as he's concerned, it was the scariest dinosaur of them all. Sure, it would take four or five good bites to finish you off, whereas the T-Rex could do it in one. However, the blistering speed of the Nanotyrannus made it a truly inescapable nightmare. Number 7. The Camouflaged Scorpion Fly Researchers recently unearthed fossilized evidence of a prehistoric scorpion fly. And yes, it's just as frightening as it sounds. The scorpion fly lived 165 million years ago and had a very impressive camouflage technique. Scientists were shocked to see the imprint of the scorpion fly looking exactly like the leaves of a prehistoric tree. They say the scorpion fly was able to camouflage itself as leaves so that it wasn't preyed upon, making it easier for them to ambush prey. The gigantic insect was definitely a monster, but a clever one at that. This latest finding adds to the mounting evidence that insects developed sophisticated camouflage a very, very long time ago. Scientists started noticing camouflage techniques about a century ago. They identified unique resemblances between fossils of insects and ancient plants. For example, extinct roaches and fern leaflets. This ancient form of mimicry was an evolutionary adaptation, one that has been working well since it was first invented. The scorpion fly is not exactly a fly-scorpion hybrid. Instead, the insect gets its name because of its male reproductive parts that look exactly like a scorpion stinger. These were more closely related to flies, but they were big suckers, nearly two inches, five centimeters long. Two inches, five centimeters doesn't sound like much, but most flies are only a fraction of an inch. The scorpion fly was nearly as long as one of your eyebrows. This latest specimen was discovered in northeastern China, in the region known as Inner Mongolia. 165 million years ago, there was a lake here surrounded by shrubland and thick forest. It was a fairly arid climate home to extinct relatives of modern trees like horsetails, ferns, conifers, and ginkgos. There were also giant insects and most definitely other terrifying beasts. Number 6. The Slurping Shastasaurus New specimens of one of the biggest marine animals since the creation of life have just been found in China. Paleontologists pieced together the fossilized remains of Shastasaurus. During their research, they found that the leviathan-sized marine reptile was most likely a suction feeder. That means it had the exact same feeding habit as modern beaked whales. Shastasaurus didn't chew its food, it literally sucked up animals like a living vacuum cleaner. It was a reptile shaped like a fish that could grow to over 27 feet, 8.2 meters long, and it had a vacuum for a mouth. The new specimens were found with help from Chinese paleontologists P. Martin Sander and Long Cheng, 
along with their colleagues. They were taken from ancient strata, dating up to 218 million years old. We've always known Shastasaurus was a very strange animal, but only with these fossils have scientists proved just how strange it really was. It was a type of ichthyosaur that had nearly nothing in common with the dozens of other species related to it. Ichthyosaurs were plentiful in the days before the dinosaurs. They were kind of like dolphins, only with long snouts and pointy teeth used for snagging fish and cephalopods. Imagine a mix between a crocodile and a dolphin, and you have a fairly good picture of an ichthyosaur. But Shastasaurus had a completely different mouth, short, toothless, and used for suction feeding. It's such a different animal that you have to wonder if it's even the same species as its so-called relatives. But just how in the world does an animal go about suction feeding? We only have to look at beaked whales to answer that question. Beaked whales have very short skulls, maybe one or two pairs of teeth in their lower jaw, but are otherwise toothless. Instead of biting and ripping their food, beaked whales use their tongues to create a suction pocket. It's like an inescapable whirlpool aimed directly into their stomachs, and they use it to draw in anything that looks particularly tasty. Shastasaurus ate the same way, only millions and millions of years before whales existed. Number 5. Ancient Bird Nests a new study suggests that bird-like dinosaurs got together and lived in communal nests 74 million years ago. Unlike selfish modern birds that hog their nests, ancient beaked dinosaurs may have worked as a community. The new study claims several female roommates, or nestmates if you'd prefer, laid batches of over 20 eggs together. The female dinosaurs then brooded together to keep the eggs warm, using their collective warmth. This would have helped the eggs to hatch more safely, while the increased number of nestmates helped keep everybody from being eaten. After all, this was still the age of the dinosaurs, and it was a bird-eat-bird -bird world. The reason this is so fascinating is that it's unusual behavior. Most scientists believe dinosaurs laid eggs in a big clump, buried them underground, and then came back for them later. This is the same way modern cold-blooded animals incubate their eggs like the crocodile. But Trudon was all about doing its own thing, apparently. Trudon was a predatory dinosaur closely related to birds, and one of the smartest animals that ever lived. It was alive during the late Cretaceous, up until the extinction event 66 million years ago. We know some other dinosaurs likely brooded, like T. rex and Velociraptor, but Trudon's intelligence allowed it to brood better and more efficiently. The study cites fossilized eggshells showing that Trudon was endothermic. It wasn't a cold-blooded reptile, but was warm-blooded and can regulate its own body temperatures. This is just like birds, whereas other dinosaurs behaved like reptiles. Dala Zelenitsky from the University of Calgary says Trudon may have even been heterothermic, meaning it could switch between warm-blooded or cold-blooded. With this unique ability and their extremely advanced intelligence, scientists think Trudons work together in harmonious communities. They could be the only known dinosaurs that had roommates. More ladies in the nest meant more eggs hatching and a stronger community. Number 4. The Giraffe Ostrich Dino In Mississippi, researchers have discovered the fossilized remains of a very strange dinosaur. It was about the size of a giraffe, but it looked more like an ostrich. Researchers say the discovery of this freakish bird-like abomination has filled a hole in the fossil record. They also say it was likely the fastest dinosaur that ever lived even faster than Nanotyrannus. The newly found dinosaur was what's known as an ornithomimosaur. This was a group of bipedal dinosaurs, meaning they walked on two legs. They looked just like ostriches or emus with large eyes, weirdly long arms, and massive claws on the end of their hands. They also had long legs, an extremely long tail, and, get this, either a mouthful of tiny teeth or a pointy beak. It varied from species to species. What you want to imagine here is a gigantic ostrich with kangaroo arms and a long monkey tail, and the claws of a giant killer chicken. That's basically the animal we're talking about. Members of the Ornithomimosaur family lived between 145 million and 66 million years ago. The scientists behind the discovery say that finding such an animal in North America fills a gap in the prehistoric food web. These were medium-sized animals that provided food for much larger predators, but also feasted on smaller animals. They were Goldilocks creatures right in the middle of the food chain. Throughout their time on this planet, these bird-like creatures changed a lot. 
The smallest species lived 125 million years ago in China and was barely 3 feet 1 meters long. It was called Hexing Quing Yi. Then there was Dinocurus mirificus from Mongolia that could grow to over 33 feet 10 meters long. The bird monsters found in Mississippi lived between 183 million years ago and were fairly small. And while we don't know how fast they were, you can bet it was a lot faster than you. Ornithomimosaurs, which by the way means bird mimic reptile, could reach speeds of 43 miles per hour, 69 kilometers per hour. Number 3. Giant Ants Princeton resident Beverly Burlingham was behind the recent discovery of a gigantic ant fossil. Princeton is a small town in British Columbia, Canada, not far from Simon Fraser University. After Beverly discovered the fossil of the freakishly big ant, she allowed scientists at the university to examine it. Researchers now say it is the first Canadian specimen of the extinct monster ant Titanomerma. This thing was huge, with the largest member of the genus being the size of a bird. It was an ant just like any tiny ant you'd see these days scuttling around in an anthill, but it was as big as a wren and had a wingspan of roughly 1.5 inches centimeters. It was bigger than most modern wasps, comparable to a hummingbird. One of the scientists who took a particular interest in the fossil was Bruce Archibald. He was behind the discovery of another Titanomerma fossil a decade ago. He uncovered it in a museum drawer in Denver. One of the reasons Bruce finds these fossils so interesting is that there are other specimens that have been found in Germany and England. Bruce wants to know how these ancient insects traveled from one continent to another when they had the Atlantic Ocean between them. The insects lived 50 million years ago, at a time when North America and Europe were very far apart. The only connection was through the Arctic, which was even colder than it is now. There seems to be no realistic way for Titanomerma to have spread from one side of the Earth to the other. It just doesn't make sense. Unless they somehow flapped their tiny wings and crossed an entire ocean, scientists are stumped. They aren't just stumped about giant ants, either. It's the whole idea of plant and animal distribution 50 million years ago. Researchers have never been able to explain how so many similar plants and animals wound up in different parts of the world. Without the magic of teleportation, it makes no sense. Do you have any theories as to why these monster ants were found oceans apart? Tell me in the comments and hit subscribe while you're at it. Number 2. The Creatures of the Sahara a massive sea creature once lived in the Sahara Desert. Not just one, a whole lot of them. New research has revealed that some of the biggest, scariest, and hungriest monsters lived in the Sahara when it was covered by an ancient body of water. The research was recently published in the Bulletin of the American Museum of Natural History. The report is the result of two decades of scientists studying fossils discovered in the African nation of Mali. The fossils came from when West Africa was submerged under the Trans-Saharan Seaway. This was between 150 million years ago. During that short period, monstrous sea serpents and marine creatures straight from hell fought for dominance. Scientists concluded the seaway was warm, shallow, and home to sea snakes that could grow 40 feet 12 meters long. It was also home to gigantic armored catfish, about 5 feet 1.5 meters long. The ecosystem was full of apex predators like crocodiliforms, serpentus, and amyadi. Or if you'd prefer it in layman's terms, giant crocodiles, frightening snakes, and ugly fish, all of them fine-tuned by nature to kill. What's really interesting is that scientists have learned the Trans-Saharan Seaway was an isolated pocket of water. For 50 million years, it was stuck completely by itself, running from modern Algeria to Nigeria. It was essentially a lake, or maybe more similar to the Mediterranean Sea. Even isolated, it was a frothing pool of unruly species and rampant gigantism. Experts have speculated the gigantism may have sprouted from a perpetual need to be bigger than the competition. This resulted in fish covered in armor scales and sea snakes so big they could swallow a boat. Number 1. Mistaken Identity 
Bryozoans are tiny aquatic invertebrates so small you can hardly see one with your naked eye. But since they're usually clumped into groups, you can see thousands of them all at once. These small living beings group together to form massive colonies and normally attach themselves to something like a rock or a sunken ship. Each individual organism is known as a zooid and they're all tiny. Each one normally has tentacles that it uses to feed, poking out through tubes on its tiny exoskeleton. When when these bryozoan zooids come together and form a colony, they create what almost looks like a large cheese grater. Depending on the number of zooids, bryozoan colonies range dramatically in size. Fossils of bryozoans are very difficult to come by, but in 2021, scientists found one dating back from the Cambrian period. That's a big deal because the Cambrian period started 540 million years ago. Scientists also call it the Cambrian Explosion because during this time there was an insanely high burst of diversity. This was when body plans came into being. When I say body plans, I'm talking about the body designs that define specific animal groups. The body plan could be the shells from mollusks, the pouches of marsupials, or the jointed skeletons of arthropods. Many of the major design plans suddenly came into existence between 540 and 500 million years ago. Bryozoans have been around ever since, meaning they've been alive for an estimated half a billion years. Finding ancient fossils of them is extremely exciting. Sadly, this discovery didn't turn out very well in the end. The scientists were so excited they even identified the species as Proto-Militian Gatehousei. But as it turned out, all they found was a fossil of a piece of seaweed. Researchers put the fossil under a microscope and were expecting to find the fossilized imprints of the individual tentacles. Instead, all they found were triangular flanges. This wasn't a bryozoan colony, it was just some fossilized green algae. Thanks for watching today's video. What's your favorite prehistoric creature? Let me know in the comments and be sure to subscribe. Come back soon for more amazing prehistoric beasts.